What day is it? Could you please tell me? What day is it? I'm confused, you see. Is it Sunday? No. Is it Monday? No. Is it Tuesday, Blue Day, Better Way, Tuesday? No, 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 no. Is it Wednesday? No. Is it Thursday? Shut up. Is it Friday, Saturday, Better Way, Saturday? <laughs> Welcome to Universal Remote, the online quiz show with production value equal to or greater than several international news organizations. Live and direct from Network 23, my name is Devin Pike, along with side of my two chemo kitties, Woody and Leslie on the scoring and the tracing, and of course, Pigman, our director of uh, I don't, uh, human resources. We'll say that because when you chop somebody up and leave them in a locker, it's human resources. A massive welcome to everybody watching from the free pl free play arcade Twitch channel. Good God. I screwed up the partnership in our very first words. We're partnering up with our favorite retro coin op paradise to beam this thing of ours directly into your entertainment starved brains. We invite each of you to follow us along on all of our social networks as that's how you'll get the skinny on all of our show. Twitter, Instagram, uh, MySpace. I think we've still got a page over there. Uh, Fet Life. Well, we're going to make a Fet Life page next time. As for the rules to play, it is incredibly simple. All you have to do is to go to baconsamurai.tv slash you are live. We have to do it that way. Why do we have to do it that way? Because domains suck. Uh, anyway, you play along by putting your answers in the chat window. That's either on your right if you're on a desktop or below you if you're on a mobile device. And if you're watching along on Twitch or YouTube, you can see the answers pour in from around the world right here. Right here. Right there. And scream at your screen that you knew the answers and these jokers didn't. The first three people who answer each question in the chat window correctly get the points. In the first half of the game, that means 30 for first, 20 for second, and 10 for third. Everyone who gets a correct answer in before the next question appears in the chat gets five points. Don't jump the gun. None of the answers are going to count if they're in the chat before the questions appear. So if you happen to hear me say it, but you don't see it in the chat yet, don't put it in. It's just that simple. All the, all the values double in the second round. Pot's right. We're locked in. Let's wheel them around and get underway with our very first category of the evening. As always, it is... Wait, hang on a second. Wait, I, 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 I realized something. Hang on. Uh, Zach is actually twisting and tweaking on this. And I realized that I didn't mention the reason why we're actually back doing Universal Remote. We were going to take a hiatus. We were going to take a break. And then three days after my tearful farewell from this channel for a while, we find out that the Dallas Observer has awarded Universal Remote the best game show in 2020, according to their Best of Dallas episode. And, I mean, we're not proud of it or anything. You know, we're not proud that we're going to actually, you know... Uh, we're not going to have any... Yeah, I'm sure you're never going to see that again. Okay, so once again, thanks to the Dallas Observer. We hope to make your um, 
honor worthy of us or something. I don't know. It's, it's a newspaper I used to work from. Anyway, first Christmas. Yeah, I've already driven. This is why we won that award. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, Zach, you paid attention. All right, speaking of paying attention, our first category of the evening every single week is Pay Attention. It's our weekly dive into the last seven days of pop culture happenings. Let's see how many of you are paying attention to the articles and not just clicking like on the headlines. Let's do it. Question number one. We have no idea when we're going to see Patty Jenkins and Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman 1984, but we do know what they're working on after that. What project did they announce over the weekend? I mean, the bottom line is, we're, we got to see that movie first, and then they got to make make that other flick. So you know, God only knows we're gonna see it. All right, question number two: Home Depot has a 12-foot skeleton. This seems to be a favorite purchase these days in these end times. So how much will this lawn ornament Sean Bradley skeleton set you back? Price is right rules do not apply here. You have to actually answer the question correctly. You cannot bid one dollar. <clears throat> question number three. This weekend, Jack White ripped the roof off of Studio 8H when he subbed in on Saturday Night Live in the last minute for a musician who got busted acting a fool and possibly exposing himself to COVID-19 infection. The only time you're gonna hear this name, who is this singer? I don't know if you guys can actually hear that in the background. And question number four. In two weeks, we'll be blessed by the gods with a second Borat film from Sasha Baron Cohen. I dare you to even come close to telling us the title. Yeah, this is going to be really subjective as hell. Leslie is going to be scoring this. And I'm allowing her to figure out how much of you, how many of you got close enough to be worthy of these points. Because this should be a freebie for you. If you were paying attention on our social feeds, you would have seen the link. We give away at least one link for pay attention every single week. So that's why it's a very good reason for you to follow us along on our social media. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, that's gonna do it for round number. Well, I'm gonna give you a couple more. Okay, all right. Let you type in a little bit further. Okay, that's it for round number one. Let's move directly on into round no Oh wait, before we do it, we have a brand new sponsor. When you get awards, you get sponsorships. It's amazing. We have a brand new sponsor for our second round of questions through the month of October. It is Silver Shamrock Masks. <laughs> It's almost time, kids. The clock is ticking. Be in front of your TV sets for the Horrorthon, followed by the big giveaway. Don't miss it, and don't forget to wear your mask. The clock is ticking. It's almost time. I can think of no reason why that's going to backfire for us whatsoever. Let's move on to round number two. It is sponsored by Silver Shamrock Masks. Essential movies for Halloween explained poorly. I know most of you ridiculous bastards started celebrating Halloween back in flippin' July because you just can't let go of the spooky season. Look, just take ministry's advice and make each and every day Halloween, okay? You know who embraces that ethos? Pigman! That's who. Our director of human resources is detailing for us four films that are Halloween classics. You must figure out which one he's really talking about. Take it away with question number one, Pigman. Oh, I put on this movie to go to sleep to. I'm usually out by the time they get to room 237 in bath time. <laughs> I wonder if Pigman actually sleeps. What does Pigman dream about? I'm curious about that. What does Pigman dream? 
Does Pigman dream of electric bacon? <laughs> Question number two, Pigman. Hit it. It's a movie about a dead kid. Four kids. <laughs> starring Christina Ricci. <laughs> I don't know if that's one of Pigman's favorites. I'm not exactly certain. <laughs> Pretty diggable. <laughs> Question number three. This is like Lucky Charms the movie with uh, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I wonder if you liked that one at all. Probably watches it a lot, just for the Jennifer Aniston scenes. Fair enough. Question number four. Black Phillip. I know that dude. Bad fucking news. Black Phillip and Anya Taylor-Joy movies scare the hell out of me. All right. I wonder if that's a classic. Oh, I'm going to say it's a classic. We're going to go with it as a classic. That's fine. All right, kids, that is going to wrap it up for round number one. And that, of course, means it is time for snack time. Four fried chickens and a Coke and some dry white bread toasted. It is snack time. And kids, on our line right now as we tabulate our scores from round one, and if you want to know what the scores are as well as the uh, answers from round one, they'll be on the crawl at the bottom once they get tabulated and posted up. But I didn't want to mess with that because on our line right now is a big deal, and I don't want to keep him waiting. It is Chance Munsterman, the big deal himself. Chance, what's going on, brother? Man, today has been a great day. Thank you so much for having me on. So um, I, I, the, the joke about us is um, whenever we would go to a local watering hole, someone would come up to me and I would, you know, then I know him from somewhere, but more, most of the time they would come up to you because you have been a local musician for, when did you, what was your first gig in, in, in North Texas? Uh, first gig ever was at a bowling alley in Euless, Texas, with me and a good friend of mine named T-Bone, and we did an acoustic duet called Last Call, and we played at the bowling alley. That was my first gig here in Dallas-Fort Worth. <laughs> and after all that time, you, you, you gigged with uh, Bad Karma, you have gigged with Red Dirt Outlaws, you've got your own solo stuff going right now. Um, is there something that you're focusing on with your music or do you just want to explore every single thing that you're able to get after? I just enjoy the process more than anything else. Um, I love being able to create and write. And during this whole um, pandemic, I've actually surprisingly enough had a lot of extra free time that I've been able to focus on it. So not only have I been uh, still putting out music with uh, Red Dirt Outlaws, we have a couple of singles out already, but I've been focusing on my own, you know, solo stuff that I've been doing for well over 20 years. But in this last year, I've already re uh, released two singles and I've got another one coming out next month. So it's been a very productive year. It's been a lot of fun. What have you learned from this pandemic? Because when we started doing Universal Remote, you were looking at what we were doing and you wanted to do your own show, which is live from Chance's house, which is... It's a great, great show where it's you playing your own music. You're talking to other musicians as well. So other than the ins and outs of streaming, what have you learned during this whole pandemic not nonsense and foolishness? Um, I've learned that through all of this, that there is still not only hope, but just a tremendous amount of really great people. Um, Live at Chances House started off with, with just me wanting to play a few of my songs because I didn't have a place to play. And now it's turned into something much bigger where uh, over the last six months, uh, collectively between myself and my network and people that have come to watch the show from man all over, um, between two or three different charitable organizations, uh, Live at Chances House has raised a little over $13,000 for uh, our community. And the, the giving and just the well wishes and the support is, has been incredible even during 
what we call these unprecedented times. Um, to me, I think that it's just shown uh, how we as a human race can still come together and take care of things that we need to take care of. And that's been a blessing. You do realize that having said that phrase, you owe a $5 donation to the This Unprecedented Times jar. You have to throw that in there now, right? <laughs> I, will, I will gladly donate because if I never heard the word that shall not be named because I don't want to owe 10, uh, I, I, I gladly will throw, it, throw in five bucks. So in the last month or, or last year or so, you, you mentioned uh, doing your, your solo music, releasing that out on all the various streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, all of those. Do you remember the first time where you looked at your plays number on Spotify and you said, okay, fine, this is actually going to be something that is worth my time and attention? Yeah, it happened about... Um maybe about three weeks after I released a single back in March called Every Step. And, um, you know, I did some initial marketing push like you have to do because you can't put a song on Spotify and not tell people about it. And um, it got around maybe six or 7,000 plays and then it went to 10, then it went to 20. And I think somewhere around that time, you even pointed out to me, you're like, this thing's going to 100,000. And I laughed at you and I said, there's no way it's going to get that much at all. <laughs> And uh, we made sort of a, a, a funny side bet. It hit 100,000. And um, currently right now it's sitting at 193,000 plays on Spotify. And I'm about to roll over 200. So it's been pretty, it's been pretty awesome. And it's very humbling, quite honestly, because uh, it was a song that was for me and just something I wanted to put out there for people to enjoy. When you hit the 100,000, did you get some? Because I think I've seen something in the background of one of your sessions at Live from Chance's house where you have I'm kind of a big deal. Do you still have that floating around the office? <laughs> yes! I'm so happy right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So um, uh. <laughs> obviously, so we've got Music by Chance, which is your Instagram handle up on there. Musicbychance.com is your website. What other stuff do you have to plug since you're a big deal now and you have to constantly let everybody know what's going on with you? So give us, give us the elevator speech, man. All right, real quick. I got some exciting news because this is something that's never happened for me personally, and it's really exciting uh, for the rest of the guys that are in the band that I play in. So not only do I have a solo act that I've been playing and doing for over 20 years, I, uh, I play and perform with a group of very, very talented musicians, and they're a new brotherhood uh, with a band called Red Dirt Outlaws. We go by RDO, and you can check us out at rdoband.com. But the cool news that we just got today is that our first single, No Breaks, which can be found on Spotify under Red Dirt Outlaws, was played on Hank 92.1 today here in Dallas-Fort Worth. And um, that's a milestone that I've never, ever had in my life before, and I couldn't be more excited about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a little kid. It's great. I, I love seeing your reaction to it. And um, I'm, I'm incredibly happy for you. Guys, check out Chance's music. He's been a friend of mine for good God. Is it over two decades now? Have we finally hit that point? I think we have. It, it's 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 close to twenty, if not twenty more. And it's great to uh, know that you're going to be coming back for year four of Who Needs Sleep this year, which is out at the Music City Mall on five and six December. So it's going to be great having you there. I don't know. You've got like nine different configurations to which you can actually appear on the show. So I, I imagine this is going to be like a queen thing where you're going to have rehearsals right up to the uh, start of the telethon. Yeah, I'm actually really excited about this year because to be honest with you, I think that it's going to be an opportunity for us to raise more money for who needs sleep. Um, I think that I've already kind of put myself out there and um, somewhat legitimize the fact that the program that I do every Thursday night uh, with Live at Chance's House, um, I I'm getting a decent audience. I get a lot of I get a lot of streams. Um, I mean, it's not like thousands upon thousands of people, but I get a fair a fairly good number of people that watch. And I think that 
if I get to combine the two and have promotion up towards it, that it's one more avenue that we can spread the message about what Who Needs Sleep does and uh, the awareness around not only cancer research, uh, but providing, uh, f providing for families through uh, North Texas outreach communities. Well, fantastic, man. I can't wait to, well, it's been, it's really been a year since I've seen you, it feels like, and I hate it. And I can't wait to see you again. And I know that you're probably going to be performing digitally for Who Needs Sleep. But at some point, we've, we've, we've just got to like, I, I may just come by and visit you outside your uh, window while you're performing on Live at Chance's house. I'll just stay outside that the, the window and be really creepy and just kind of like tap the glass every now and then. Well, it is October, so I can... Uh... I can open up the window back here and uh, we can do a guest spot. You can sing through the window for me. <laughs> it's about damn time. Well, uh, speaking of spooky and October, um, you can't really come on to Universal Remote and do a snack time segment and not do a category for us. So would you, Chance Munsterman, big deal himself, be willing to help us out with our third category for the evening? Of course. I'm looking forward to it. All right, dude, let's go with uh, category number three, Resting Witch Face. The Wicked Witch, the Blair Witch, and Ellen DeGeneres, all of these witches are given a bad name. Hashtag not all witches. I'm going to, or Chance is going to give you some hints about the more well-behaved witches, and you are going to tell me the movie or TV show that Chance is talking about. Chance, take it away with question one. Question one. This witch is just wholesome. She learns her witchy ways and becomes the first Uber Eats flyer. What else would you expect from Miyazaki? Do you watch Miyazaki films? I, I, I wasn't sure if you were a, a big uh, Japanese animation fan or not. Um, I've seen, I've seen the, the, the bigger ones that have been out in production. Um, trying to think of the last one that I watched, but yes, I, I like them. I enjoy them very much. I, had a short stint for a while that I was doing anime voiceovers for Dragon Ball Z, so I, I got into anime. One more deal, more chance of a big deal. All right, let's go with question number two. <laughs> question number two. This witch is filled with greeting card goodness. She had 12 movies and six seasons on TV. It's the Hallmark Channel's most successful franchise and longest running character. Now, tell me the truth. Do you and Nick ever turn on the Hallmark Channel around Christmas time or Halloween time? And are you into the whole Hallmark Channel scene? Uh, I, I can't honestly say I know what channel number it is or where it's at. But if it's the station that shows It's a Wonderful Life, I'm probably on there sometime during the month of December. <laughs> nice dodge, my friend. Let's go with question number three, you jackass. <laughs> Question three. Sadly, this witch has become a victim of the times, canceled after her fourth season. Before Netflix, this witch was SFW, as it was part of the TGIF lineup. You know, it's, it's all these internet acronyms. Safe for work, I think, is the uh, reason for this. And not social uh, flying warrior. I don't think that's what that one means. <laughs> Understood. I guess if it would have been NSFW, I would have known what it meant. We're not gonna. We're not gonna get you in any trouble with your workplace. Let's go with question number four. In question number four. This TV witch had two dicks, both named Darren. Well, I said I wasn't gonna get you in any trouble with work, and then I give you that question to give. So that's just even more fun. Chance, thank you so much for being a part of our uh, third season debut. It is a blast to get to talk to you as always, and I, I love hanging out at Joe's Joe's Garage with you. I sincerely cannot wait until we're raising a pint and you're you're raising a Diet Coke and I'm raising a beer. Be safe. Love you. Love to Nick. Have a wonderful, wonderful night, my friend. Much love, brother. Be good. Take care, and uh, have a great rest of the show. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for having me on. Just another way to uh, monetize Universal Remote, the Universal Remote Toaster 
coming to a web store near you. Thanks again to Chance Munsterman. Always great to see him again. Let us go on to our final category of the evening. Location, location, location. Famous horror and Halloween locations like Camp Crystal Lake, Elm Street, The Ellen Show. All places of horror and examples of what we're looking for. I'm going to give you an infamous postal address and you're going to tell me the TV show or movie. Question number one. The Monroeville Mall, 200 Mall Circle Drive, Monroeville, Pennsylvania, 15146. And I knew Hillary was going to answer that. Question number two. 1630 Ravello Drive, Sunnydale, California, 95037. I'm going to catch hell for that one later. <laughs> oh, good God. Question number three. 1 West 72nd Street, Manhattan, New York, 10023. Our fourth and final question for the evening, 112 Ocean Avenue, Long Island, New York, 11701. The trick is these are all actually addresses. In the most part, the, post co the postcodes match up with what they actually are. I did a little research. We do research here at Universal Remote. And kids, put your pencils down. That is going to wrap it up for the questions for this evening. As we tabulate everything, I want to thank Woody and Leslie on scoring, Zach Twisted and Tweaking on the dials, Pigman for this lovely package. He left me this package of bacon. My, my cat Kieran has been sick. He leaves this on my doorstep, and I don't know... I mean, it said for kitty, and then the ink kind of smeared off when I was looking at it. I don't know if this is pig or something else. I'm not exactly certain, but it's, I mean, I might fry it up. We'll find out. Um, so once again, thanks to Free Play Arcade, where you can always head to freeplayinc.com slash save the arcade for details on all of their goings on at all times. If you're a fan of this show and you want to show your love, please visit, yeah, I'm going to say it, our Patreon page, patreon.com slash universal remote, where you can get great campaign swag like the new universal remote coffee mug or your very own Pigman shout out clip. That's patreon.com slash universal remote. We will see, oh, wait, oh, I'll do the scores. And the thing. See, we I got spoiled because we did the scoring and the uh, answers prior to that. So with Resting Witch Face, uh, the Miyazaki film where a girl w learns her witchy ways and becomes the first Uber Eats flyer, that was Kiki from Kiki's Delivery Service. The Hallmark Channel's most successful franchise and longest running character is The Good Witch. If Rachel was playing, she would have gotten that right. This witch has become a victim of her times, canceled after her fourth season on Netflix. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Samantha on Bewitched had two dicks. We would have taken either one of those. Um, for location, 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 the Monroeville Mall was the original Dawn of the Dead location. 1630 Ravello Drive in Sunnydale was Buffy Summers from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 1 West 72nd Street in Manhattan was the site of Rosemary's Baby. And 112 Ocean Ave in Long Island is the Amityville Horror. Let us take a look at the scoring. Thank God there are no ties. It came close. We came close to this. A close to having to bust out the tiebreaker. But we don't. So, with 220 points, in the third place is Newbie. N-O-O-B-Y. There's a lot of newbies out there. I don't know which newbie that is. So, Identify yourself in the chat, and we will give you the kudos that you deserve for coming in third. John Gamero squeaking ahead into second place 
with 225 points and clearly out distancing the field, busting some ass tonight with 360 points. Ken Goach, Ken, you, 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 sir, are the smartest person on the internet. Once again, on behalf of everybody here at Universal Remote, thank you very much. Thank you for making this an amazing time as always. And we're going to keep cranking them out because now, now we have an award. Now we actually have to do something that, you know, we didn't think we were going to do. That is continue on with the show. For Woody, Leslie, Zach. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. <laughs> I thought he was going to do the outpost thing. Son of a bitch. My name is Devin Pike. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you guys in 24 hours and six more days. My name is Devin Pike. This is Universal Remote. We'll see you guys again soon. Cheers and peace out.